I have all my strawberries all sliced up, all 10 pounds. Now, if you're new to freeze drying, you might arrange your strawberries in your trays something like this. They're all laid out in nice little rows. They look so cute. Like, they're like little teeny hearts. And they're just so adorable. And they're just so nice and even. If you do strawberries like this, it's going to take you weeks to freeze dry this amount. So you may be a little bit timid and being aggressive when it goes to freeze drying, but you need to. So we're going to go big here. So either go big or go somewhere else. But we're going to put three pounds per tray. Three pounds is not a problem per tray with strawberries. But if you're going to put three pounds of strawberries on a tray, make sure you put the same amount of weight on every tray so that all the trays have the same amount. Basically, you're going to have the same amount of moisture so all the trays will finish at the same time. Now, there's, there's a disparity in the heating of all the trays in the freeze dryer. and We'll talk about that in a moment. So I'm going to load up all four trays. I have a medium freeze dryer. I'm going to put three pounds of strawberry on all four trays. So I'm going to do just shy of 12 pounds altogether. If I can't do three pounds on each tray, then I'll equal everything out. Once everything is loaded, I'm also going to pre-freeze the strawberries in my freezer rather than putting them in at room temperature in my freeze dryer. It just makes things more efficient. This is how I freeze dry. So I have four trays here, and each tray is 1,846 grams. If you've seen my videos, I'm kind of a gram guy. So that basically translates to about four pounds per tray. So these are going to go into the freezer to pre-freeze and ready for the freeze dryer by tomorrow morning. It is the following morning. and These are all my strawberries. They're all frozen, ready to go. I made this sh shelf oh, several years ago, welded it up so I have a place to put my strawberries where they won't interfere with the rest of the food in my freezer. And this freezer is really, really cold. This can actually get down to about a negative 10. So this is why I pre-freeze everything prior to going into the freeze dryer. I do not cover any of my food. The freezer will actually remove between four and 6% of the moisture through sublimation. Freezer burn is actually a form of sublimation, so I'll keep everything uncovered because this is where the freeze drying process actually begins. So if you want to know how to make these little shells, I do have a video on it that you can reference it to. But it's, the strawberries are ready to go into the freeze dryer, so I'm going to go ahead and start the freeze dryer up. This is my freeze drying. Uh, area at the end of my hallway and this is how you'll always find my vacuum pump when it's not being used. The valve will be open and the cap will be removed and I have a block of wood behind it lifting the rear end of the pump up allowing the oil to drain out and when I do drain my vacuum pump I always do it when it's hot because the hot oil will always drain faster while it's hot than when it's cold. And while it's hot, it will drain faster, allowing it to sweep away any food particulates that's going to be inside the uh, pump, and also any moisture that's also going to be in the, in the pump that the gas ballast didn't evaporate through the filter. So this is how it's going to remain until I use it next. And I will always keep it this way with the valve open, cap off, because as this cools down, as hot and cold interact, sometimes you'll get condensation. And then rather, in, in, rather in, instead of trapping the condensation in the pump, causing moisture, all that condensation will have the ability to exit the pump into 
the funnel in the jar below. I'm getting ready to start this up to put my strawberries inside, so I'm going to go ahead and shut the valve. I'm going to reach behind here and take the block of wood out. And I'm going to go ahead and fill this up with fresh, clean oil. Now I have this little container I picked up from Home Depot. Inside I have my little funnel. And I'm going, going to go ahead and fill this up to a predetermined line I have right here because I know exactly how much oil this pump will take. And this is all used but good filtered oil. Just like so. And I'll put the lid back on here just to keep the dust and the dirt out. And then the filter. Now if you're wondering about the color of the filter, that's because this is this is the Navac filter. It's a replacement filter for the Harvest Right. You can get the original Harvest Right filters from Harvest Right if you so desire. So now my pump is all ready to go. Now I have to deal with the oil that's down here. So I'll take the funnel out. And this is the oil that was drained from yesterday. Now dealing with the oil, I'll take an empty quart jar that I have, and this is the, the good old Harvest Right filter. And I will go ahead and pour the filtered oil into this container. And this oil right here, I'm going to let this sit for several days before I use it, just to allow anything that might be in this oil to settle down to the bottom, including any moisture that might be in there. And then I'll pour this off into another container and anything that might be into the bottom down here, I will pour that off into this container that is marked junk oil. And like we used to do in the good old days, I will go ahead, once this is full of garbage, I will go ahead and put this in the freezer and this will freeze off the water and allow me to pour off the good oil on top. And then the frozen block of water I'll just throw in the trash. And then the oil that came out of my machine from yesterday, which is this right here, this will then this will then be poured into the harvest right filter pitcher and will be filtered. And the whole thing basically will be redone over and over again. And then my funnel will go back down there for tomorrow. Another thing I do when I freeze dry is I do not use the Harvest Right defrost mode. I always use a fan and this is just a fan that's on a stick that I can stick into the shelf. There's no reason for me to use the, the uh, heating pads inside the freeze dryer to defrost the ice. I just use good old ambient air that blows into my freeze dryer. Plus I will leave this on 24 seven or overnight just to make sure that everything inside my freeze dryer is gonna be absolutely dry. There'll be lots of particulates of food. They'll be on the freeze dryer chamber wall that uh, come through sublimation. And this will just kind of help blow those out of the way. It'll make sure that everything will be nice and dry inside the chamber and around the shelf assembly, just to make sure that I can't get any mold or bacteria growth. And every so often I will actually remove the gasket, remove the shelf and I'll wipe everything dry, especially in between uh, freeze drying meats or other foods that could cause any bacterial growth. But since we're just doing some vegetables right now, there's no need to wipe it down. So I can go ahead and turn off the fan, put the fan aside, and go ahead and shut the door and close up the valve. Now, the menu is very important on how your menu is going to be set. And I'll show you my favorite menu settings. This ends part one of how I freeze dry. Part two will discuss my menu settings batch setup, tray rotation, and packaging. And I hope you stick around for part two. A link for part two will be at the end of this video.